I got two special testimonies today. Anita and Brian have something they want to share. There does that pass. <laughs> Hi, good morning. We can get the slideshow whenever you're ready, Penny. Well, we were here today, to, we wanted to give a testimony. We have been watching a slow-moving miracle over the last year. Um, for those of you that were not aware, uh, a little bit over a year ago, um, Ethan was injured. We were out working at my mom's place in Virginia. Um, we were clearing some trees off the land, and Ethan's leg got pinned between a tractor bucket and a tree. Um, and he was very close to having lost a leg. Um, and so we're here to give a praise report about that miracle. Um, I remember one of, the, one of the clearest memories I have uh, of the time was uh, as we were racing down to Duke Hospital, he had taken a helicopter flight down, and um, the other two boys and I were, were headed down in the truck, and I was um, parked in the parking garage and getting ready to head into the hospital and try to figure out where in this mammoth place my son was, um, standing in an elevator thinking, God, just please undo this. Just please undo it. I don't want it to happen. Just, just take it away. Undo it. Um, but, of course, he did not. Uh, he did not undo it right away, and I'll talk about that more at the end. But we have been watching with gratitude since then as the Lord has unfolded miracle after miracle in small ways to, to, um, to just in, in the way that he does, to set things right. We were over, the first one was being overwhelmed with the response from our church, uh, being over, overwhelmed with the response from our church family and supporting our other kids and supporting us and supporting with meals and supporting in, in every way imaginable. And it was just such a blessing to watch. And we've watched every little milestone that he's had uh, along the way of, of getting out of the hospital and then getting off of medical equipment that was really irritating. <laughs> Um, and, and getting off of other so many things and then starting to do things, starting to walk, starting to ride bicycle, and most recently starting to run. Um, very well. So through this time, the part of my testimony of this is that I have recognized that God is not in the undoing business. If he were to undo it, that would imply one of two things. Either he wasn't in control at the start of it, or he made a mistake. And he didn't do either one of those things. It was the, the little Ethan getting ready for one of his many surgery procedures. He loved playing with the little hats. Um, God isn't in the undoing business because that's not why he allowed it in the first place or not why it happened in the first place. So based on Romans 8.28 that talks about, you know, we know all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. I've had a new saying that's kind of come into my head as I, as I walk through these things. And that is, is that this did not happen to me. This happened for me. And every time I think of something horrible happening like this, even something as, as gripping as, as your small son being, being hurt in such a, a horrific way, I have to choose to think about that this did not happen to me. This is not a victim thing. I am not a victim of this. But in this case, or in, in this situation, I want to look at what it is that God is allowing, what is it he's going to work in our lives through this time. Well, uh, Ethan has a great-grandma that um, had, a, had a dream uh, one night of Ethan standing before a large audience of youth and, and that this testimony and this time was a center point of, the, uh, of his testimony to them. So I know that God has good things in store through all this. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you that were a part of the miracle of that response and have continued to be a response to, uh, to helping us out in that troubled time. And I want to thank all of you that continue to be part of the village that takes to raise our children. <laughs> Thank you. We have another testimony. Uh, Jason and Jamie Moy has something special they would like to share. Good morning. In December of 2017, after a year of trying to have a child of our own, Jamie and I engaged with Shady Grove Fertility Center. Numerous tests were run and evaluated over the next few months. The numbers that came back from testing were not terrible, but also not hopeful. Jamie consistently stated throughout this entire process, it takes only one, and God is bigger than any doctor. He is the creator of life. I will probably cry, so I apologize. Um, during the testing phase, which for those who have not been through it, it's very grueling. <laughs> um, I had a dream that my biological father gave me a child for my birthday. 
And when I woke up, I thought, that's very odd. <laughs> and then, um, and I remember saying in my dream to my father, do you realize how much of a responsibility this is, you giving me a child? Um, but when I woke up, I had a very strong sense that it was um, the father giving us a child, not my biological father. Um, and then he would take care of it all. So after all the tests were run, uh, the determination of the doctors was that we needed to do IVF, in vitro fertilization. One doctor even told Jason, it's not gonna happen unless you go through IVF. Um, the numbers just weren't there. I was not comfortable with the idea of IVF for us, um, so we agreed to try a less invasive treatment called IUI. Uh, we were set to do our first round of IUI in May of 2018, but at the end of April, much to our surprise, we found out we were pregnant. Obviously, we were thrilled about the news and even more excited for the testimony for the Lord through it all. Shady Grove did a few ultrasounds and, looked, and it all looked very promising. However, at our first appointment with our OB, the baby, which previously had a heartbeat, no longer had a heartbeat. Uh, our OB's office sent us immediately to the hospital to have another ultrasound to confirm the results, and the hospital confirmed that we lost our baby. So as you can imagine, we were devastated. Before that moment, I didn't realize how much you could miss or mourn someone you never really knew. We grieve not only the loss of our child, but the loss of our testimony for the Lord. Through the grieving process, I found two songs to be particularly soothing to my soul. Do It Again by Elevation Worship and It Is Well by Christine DeMarco and Bethel Music. They became my prayer songs as I believed that the Lord could do it again. And ultimately, I just wanted to have peace in my soul regardless of the Lord's plan for our lives. After consideration and prayer, I felt as though the Lord had allowed us to get pregnant when he did as a sign of hope and confirming that he would give us the child we longed for. So we decided not to pursue any fertility treatments. For six months, we tried, without fertility treatments, to conceive again. At the end of 2018, doubt started creeping in, and we decided to engage with Fertility Grove again at the beginning of 2019. This started another process of tests and evaluations, as it had been almost a year. I had made some lifestyle changes to try to boost the numbers. However, even after a year of these lifestyle changes, the numbers were still not hopeful. They once again encouraged IVS, but we stated we were only interested in IUI. In April, April this year, we did our first round of IUI. The numbers for this treatment looked more hopeful, however, uh, it was unsuccessful. In May, Mahesh Chavda prayed for our situation and stated that he saw a child. This renewed some of the hope that we had lost. A day later, we went, underwent round two of IUI treatment. The numbers had fallen again for this treatment. It was also unsuccessful. We were about to begin the third IUI treatment in June, however, it was put on hold because I found a lump in my right breast. Uh, the treatment would have to wait until a determination was made about the lump. Normally, I would be very anxious about finding something like this. However, I was at peace. I felt like I was being told that he put this on hold so that he could show us that he was the creator of life. The scans all came back normal, and no one could see any indication of the lump that I felt. My doctor wanted me to repeat the scans a little over a month later, just to be sure. In August, a few days after my birthday, I was set to have the second mammogram. However, they wouldn't do another mammogram because I was late in my cycle. I told them I'd already taken an at-home pregnancy test, I wasn't pregnant, everything was fine. That wasn't enough for them. That was not enough assurance for them. They did do an ultrasound and everything came back normal. Again, no indication of a lump. Uh, two days later, Jamie took another at-home pregnancy test and found that, that we were pregnant. The Lord had been faithful in his promises and we are now just over 19 weeks pregnant. All tests and scans show a healthy baby developing as it should. We are very grateful, very blessed, and give all glory to God. He made an even greater testimony out of our difficult journey. 
As we move forward, we would appreciate your prayers to cover us and our baby boy. What a great Thanksgiving story. Thank you, Jesus.